Thanks for tuning in. It's uh, a while that I don't record uh, a live uh, appointment. Uh, I think uh, I will keep the AI voice uh, for simplicity in uh, all other um, format, like for example, the monthly, because it's easier for the subtitle. Uh, obviously, not having my strong Italian accent doesn't. Uh, uh, make mistake on the translation but this one is an appointment that i want to follow as my usual directory so deep dive is is something that is ongoing for a few months and i'm trying to zoom in on some of the problem that you can have one of the topic that you'll find more often in your career or when you approach to security is threat modeling there are tons of good resources explaining everything about threat modeling why you need to do it what's the benefit but you don't find many video out there that actually talk on the difficulties that you have doing that and which kind of process you go through so I'm trying to help you out uh, with something quite practical one of the problem uh, that you'll experience is that uh, whatever solution you go for free open source commercial doesn't matter you need to think uh, about the format it sounds uh, a bit funny but uh, even when you talk about JSON there are projects that implement their own schema on JSON so that means that if you take uh, one file and you just convert it uh, into JSON, doesn't mean that works. One of the best examples for this one is actually an open source or WASP project uh, that is Street Dragon that I will show you later. So here you have a summary of the most common uh, uh, software that you can find out there and what they support. Personally, is a, a bit uh, a shame that there is no web interface uh, or any way a way to have it cross-platform uh, uh, Microsoft uh, solution because it was one of the first one in threat modeling and is using his own uh, supported file TM7 uh, as you see and it's not really easy so you'll find that when you start to use one of these uh, file format it will not be easy to transaction so try to test uh, what you want to use uh, in thinking also about the future for example if you go for a commercial uh, it does have uh, most of the time some api ingestion that create automatically these files uh, and uh, simplify your process it's it's, uh, it's it's really easy peasy especially when you work uh, on a pipeline uh, like a sec devops kind of settings i thought it was right to start with this uh, intro because uh, everybody think is threat modeling and threat modeling is for uh, everything it's not really true so right now uh, let's jump on uh, one of the <clears throat> simpler example that you can have this project, uh, Tree Agile, uh, be sure to not put a, a T because uh, 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 it's not threat, it's Tree Agile, is one of the most well known uh, software that you can find open source. And it does come with a lot of uh, goodies. First of all, uh, you have a full repository, you can fork it to do whatever you want. Uh, but it does come with a really good documentation and good example. I'm going to show you one of these examples. For example, we do have some versioning of their YAML file already formatted to show you an environment and now is structured. I did a bit of testing and uh, I use this one. My original idea was to create a video showing you how you get translated between uh, application, but it's not easy at all. For example, I took this uh, example uh, format of a threat model and tried to convert it uh, in the threat dragon and just ingest it uh, straight away in uh, threat dragon itself. 
it doesn't work so easily each time I give you an error one thing that I don't like about OWASP threat dragon is that you can't have a debug what it doesn't like of a file that is a really complicated it's just a GUI there is nothing command line that can parse uh, Thread Dragon is coming with some example like the one that is open here but uh, it's a real shame uh, to have all these file format problem uh, coming back to what I was showing this one is an example of one of the report that you can generate where uh, you do have a, a really classical view of all the risk uh, is explaining uh, um, the error in, with CWE in terms of programming uh, error in, so is using uh, a, a good portion uh, of the um, database and uh, you can just go there connect uh, to the proper CWE and see the explanation of this one, uh, it's really great. But what I, I like it uh, most than everything is the visualization because it's quite advanced uh, compared to other tools, especially considering that it is out of the box uh, uh, having this kind of quality. I'll show you uh, soon, it's a long uh, report. Uh, I want to what it was at the beginning sorry about that here we go here is having the summary of the like a dashboard but it does have also the diagram with the boundaries and this one is fantastic because um, it's really at a good level I mean, uh, I did try to edit uh, and do various uh, kind of uh, zoom in, zoom out, change the type of environment. Uh, obviously, if you go commercial, uh, you'll find uh, that uh, when you have that integration with uh, directly the GraphQL API of Azure, everything gets so e easy. But if you are working on the SDLC side of things, uh, diagrams like that uh, are wonderful. So let me uh, let me zoom in for a second, uh, trying to help uh, your view. So it defines really well the boundaries. Uh, it shows the diagram flow. I tried to go on uh, the open source uh, free. Iris community, for example, and using the AI trying to generate something similar, but the level is uh, on the community is not uh, like the commercial. So I do suggest you to think also long term what you need and uh, which level of granularity, but step back on the quality of a JSON file. You don't expect that just the tool will do the job for you. You need to be capable to generate a quality file, okay? Now, let's come back um, for a second uh, to the... Now, here you'll find um, that you have uh, a model with AI, okay? I just copy and paste um, Give me one second on copy and paste. Uh, like that, you understand uh, what I'm talking about. It's live, I uh, didn't prepare it because uh, if not, it was just a bunch of uh, screenshot uh, and it wasn't interesting. I, I made the presentation slimmer than I could. So, as you say here, hang tight.
just like baking a cake this will take a short while to get right like that at least you understand uh, also in terms of capabilities what you have uh, as a open source uh, uh, and uh, no license uh, kind of option it's really great that we uh, added this AI interface uh, but if you look at from the screenshot you can import file but don't forget the problem of a type of file so let's see Let's skip the tour for a second. So you see, it's impressive because it, it took uh, uh, the file, it did, uh, it did the diagram, but if you look at the boundaries, are not really something that uh, I would put at this level. The file is exactly the same. I think it's still a work in progress and uh, if you go outside uh, the AI import from file you need to upgrade for this feature so you need to understand uh, a bit better for sure you can uh, use uh, and just create your own project and do do it manually i don't know I think the real value of this solution is when you have API integration that uh, automatically generate the files uh, like this YAML. I, I consider the, the YAML file generation really easy if it's out of something that you can script in your pipeline. It's slightly different if it's a real infrastructure. On that side, uh, I consider really nice and mature uh, the, the um, threat modeler interface I have more experience with that uh, uh, Iris Risk uh, is capable even to ingest Excel uh, it's true that if you go on with Excel also Kyris does really good stuff but I don't I didn't play with security card and SD element I want to clarify that I'm not a big fan of a Microsoft one. I use it multiple time, but the problem is it doesn't work on Linux. It's not on Mac OS as well. On Linux, you need uh, to use um, uh, the emulation for uh, launching the Excel file. And it's not something that security wise you really love. And uh, at enterprise level, you don't do. That's the reason why I think the approach of OWASP uh, uh, Threat Dragon is nice uh, because it's web interface, you don't care, you can install it in any platform, but I find it uh, re really limited in terms of format, uh, it's a really long time, I didn't find a, a good way of connecting uh, to a pipeline. So my suggestion, uh, at least based on my uh, journey, is uh, Triagile, fantastic, uh, uh, for SD, uh, for um, uh, sec devops pipeline kind because you can script all this file if not uh, if you need the really support to consider the two commercial threat modeler areas this uh, risk because those are, are having api uh, integration uh, more cloud oriented as well i hope you found it interesting uh, i want to give you another hint you do have a new paper, it just got released uh, uh, the 22nd of April, uh, that is specific to multi agentic system. I'm still studying on that side. Uh, I'm working on RAG and other type uh, or of implementation I did some threat modeling uh, manually uh, I'm still uh, reading this paper but I thought it was uh, right for this episode to mention if you are uh, in something gen uh, generative AI oriented in threat modeling have a look to this one could be that there is uh, something uh, smarter in terms of suggestion also as a method um, I hope you appreciate the content as you see it's not copy and paste from somebody else 
and uh, I spend a lot of effort so uh, subscribe stay tuned I will try it to to generate more unique content I need time uh, and obviously as everybody I have uh, a career and I'm trying to keep uh, that uh, up and running uh, and this one is just uh, an effort uh, based on sharing is caring so your support subscribing is uh, highly appreciated thanks stay tuned and uh, take it easy take care bye bye